we're shifting now inward so that we can have a better awareness of where we stand when it comes to stress, how we deal with that so that we can look after ourselves and also have better capacity to recognize stress and help other people too. So we're looking from the inside out. And I say reframing stress here because stress uh, historically, at least in the last 20 or so years for sure, has had a really bad rap. Stress is bad for you. Stress makes you sick. You know, stress gives you X, Y, Z. Part of that is true. Holding stress in our bodies and being in a heightened, uh, high stress environment for a long period of time is indeed um, not what our bodies are built for. It will have a negative impact on our physical, emotional, and mental well being. Our bodies are designed to return to a baseline. So if we're in a heightened sense of stress constantly, that is eventually going to lead us to what Ness is talking about is a sense of burnout. We can't do any more. However, if you can return to your baseline, your rest and digest stage, then, then you can better um, deal with stress in future. So it's almost like a cycle, like a wave. So in reframing stress, I want us to talk about what stress is, what the difference between stress and stressors is, and how to move through our body's natural stress cycle. And by doing that, um, hopefully in future, you'll be able to more subjectively just notice, or rather, sorry, objectively notice, I'm experiencing stress in my body. What do I need right now to move through that stress cycle rather than letting it bottle up? Yeah. So I'll take it to you all as, again as well. Think of a time when you felt stressed and overwhelmed. What did you notice about your body's physiological response? What emotions did you experience? So what was happening in your body? Yeah, and before I got on this call, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. my hands were a little sweaty. You know, my breath was a little bit shorter. Um, I was feeling quite warm. And then as I relaxed into, you know, Ness talking, I got cold again. You saw I put my jumper on. Um, so, and that's, and that's really one of my natural responses to I'm about to speak. I get, my body gets pumped up and ready for it. Um, that could be stress. It could also be excitement. Um, any other emotions that you experience? For me, when I'm feeling stressed and overwhelmed, I feel like I get quickly irritated. Uh, I sometimes, if I don't address it, I might very quickly uh, switch from irritation into anger, frustration. Sometimes it might go the other way and, and it's sadness. Well, if we now just look at the science of this, because again, we are... Uh, we are looking at this objectively. Um, emotions flow through our body. It is a natural occurrence. It is a necessary thing. So what does that look like scientifically? What's going on? So we have our sympathetic and our parasympathetic nervous system. Um, I will break that down into easier language. But sympathetic, imagine you're on a safari and you've got a big old rhino staring at you and he's looking angry and you're pretty close to him and you're thinking, holy moly, this is life or death. <laughs> We've got a rhino here ready to charge. What's gonna happen in your body? I think some of the things we just talked about, right? Your heart rate is gonna speed up and you're gonna be ready for fight or flight. Are you going to fight the rhino? Probably not. Are you going to try and run from the rhino? Probably yes. Another one that's not mentioned here is when we're extremely overloaded is freeze. Some animals also in the, in the um, animal kingdom will freeze and pretend to be dead. 
but that's a step beyond fight or flight. Physical cues that your sympathetic nervous system has kicked in is indeed the heart rate, shallow breathing, a bit of a dry mouth, I'm, I'm drinking lots of water, you know, dry mouth, dilated pupils, goosebumps, sweating, nausea. Um, your digestion will be reduced in this time. And this is why a lot of people with um, prolonged stress also suffer from gut issues. They are definitely connected. There are more nerve endings in your gut than there are in your brain. And they are both connected to each other. So yes, your digestion is connected to the way that you are dealing with stress or not. And increased blood pressure. So that's your um, simple terms, your fight or flight. It is a natural occurring thing. We also need this, uh, one, to run away from a rhino, you know. Two, um, this can also be harnessed in a positive way. You know, stress gets a bad rap. However, stress can be good for us. It can hype us up. It hyped me up for this talk with you. It hypes me up for any performance or anything I have to do in front of people. You know, it gets us ready for stuff. It gets us excited and that's good. Stress can be used in a good way. So just keep that in mind, fight or flight, often seen as a negative thing in a prolonged sense it would be, but it can also be harnessed for your benefit. But just good to be aware of how it, um, how it flows through your body. Now, to return to your baseline, so imagine you've just run away from this rhino, you've run up a tree, the rhino has gone, you can get home or you can get back to the Airbnb and cuddle up and just, oh, you know, come down from that experience. We're returning to our baseline. So we've got this gorgeous little puppy here representing our parasympathetic nervous system. So that's when you're returning to that baseline where we can rest and digest. So this is when your body is now back at its natural calm and composed state. And you'll notice a slower heartbeat, your breathing starts to regulate, your saliva is back in your mouth, <laughs> um, your digestion is moving na more naturally again, and your muscles are relaxing. So maybe those knots in your shoulders are starting to uh, ease off like they did for me last night. So really nice to think of it in this way. We have a fight and flight response. We have a rest and digest response. Both are natural, both are necessary for us as functioning human beings. It's just good to know that we don't want to be caught in either one of them, um, you know, all the time, let me say. Yeah. And just good to notice your cues. Your cues might be different than someone else's. Um, someone might sweat quite a bit if they're anxious, if they're nervous. Um, other people will feel it in their hands. Um, you know, everyone's a little bit different here. So it's even an interesting conversation to have with family members, members of your bubble, um, people at your workplace. How do you experience stress? What comes up? So that maybe me as a caring team member, I can notice that in you. Like if you're suddenly um, tensed up and irritated at anything I say, do I have permission then to ask you how you're doing? Or would you prefer me to give you some space? can open up an interesting conversation. So um, before we get into the practical uh, side of things, I also just want to go through briefly uh, stress, stressors and emotions. So often we say things like, I'm stressed right now. Um, my suggestion is to use language like I'm feeling stressed right now. Yeah, because stress is, as we've just discussed, it's not a constant in our bodies. We will ebb and flow and return to our baseline. Stress is our body's neurological natural response to situations of fight and flight, for example. Um, stress can be... Uh, no, I'll come back to that. So stress, if we compartmentalize it, 
is a natural neurological um, experience in our bodies. It's a chemical stew. Yeah. And all of our nervous system is involved, the sympathetic, the parasympathetic, our brains, all the way through to like the nerves in our skin endings that um, stress manifests in that way. And it is natural. It's normal. A stressor is different. A stressor is what triggers that chemical stew in your body. So it could be things at work, things going on with your kids, uh, money, conversations, um, grander scale or system uh, systemic things like capitalism or global warming, things that trigger stress within you. Um, they can activate your stress response. So those are external, but there might also be some internal stressors, for example, self-criticism or body self-criticism, um, trauma history. There are also internal stressors that can trigger stress within your body. So stress, um, we need it. It's that chemical stew in our bodies that helps us survive um, being chased by a lion or chased by a hippo. <laughs> but um, simply removing stress sores from our lives, for example, you hand in a really important project or paper at university at work, and then you get sick as a dog the next day. Yeah. Um, you, leave, you leave a really stressful um, and, and toxic workplace and your body breaks down afterwards you're burnt out removing a stressor does not mean that the stress has moved through your body and so that's something that I want to um, just in, as put out there as a way of thinking as a way of reframing stress is that stress and stressors are not the same stress is natural and necessary it's just happening in our bodies stressors can be external or internal but just removing them does not mean that stress has moved through our bodies like we need it to for us to feel good on the other side. Um, this is a really amazing quote from, um, it's, it's a book, but there's also a podcast if you're wanting to go bite-sized a little deeper into the topic. There's a podcast here that we've linked to talking about emotions and stress as a tunnel. They have a beginning, middle and end. If you go all the way through them to the light at the end, you're doing good. Exhaustion, and Ness was talking about emotional exhaustion, that happens when we are stuck in that emotion. We're stuck in the stress. We're stuck in the rage. We're stuck in the frustration. So we need to be able to move through our body's natural stress cycle to be able to avoid exhaustion of this kind. And that's something that I'd love to touch on as I move into, okay, ways to, um, ways to complete our stress cycle. Um, we also have to allow ourselves the time to do that. And we as carers, as system changes, uh, we have a lot of weight on our shoulders. We have our own expectations, the expectations of our beneficiaries and the impact that we want to create. And that is so big and glorious and also heavy that if we only focus on that, it becomes very difficult to feel okay with giving ourselves permission to take time to complete our stress cycles and to take time to be okay so that we can do the work that we're needing. We, um, as carers as well, just like Ness was talking about, like the, the more classic carer in like the health industry, for example, or mothers, parents, um, we are carers too as impact entrepreneurs. We care deeply about what we do. We care deeply about the impact we mean to create, which also makes it even more important for us to realize that we as human beings need, you know, to go through these cycles. We need to give ourselves permission to make that a priority because if we do not, we will burn out and the impact we mean to create will also be touched by that. So one, one keyword that comes up for me, and I'll talk about it a bit more later, um, is uh, the setting of healthy and respectful boundaries for yourself 
and for other people as well. People within your personal lives, people within your work lives. Boundaries is a really big topic that a lot of um, entrepreneurs, impact entrepreneurs, social enterprises really struggle with because it feels bad to set boundaries. It feels wrong to do so. However, it is one of the most important things that we can learn to do in this, in this, um, in the, in the experience of being an entrepreneur. Here are some really great ways to, in the moment, um, so maybe it's not a long-term fix, but if you're feeling really um, stressed or anxious in the moment, there are some great ways to flip the script, so to say. Um, there's breath work, and we'll do one more. Things like journaling, writing down what you're grateful for every night. I've been doing that since the beginning of the year. I was not a big journaler beforehand, but now I write every evening th at least three things that I'm grateful for, and it really helps me. Meditation and yoga are great. Body tapping and shaking and dance are also really great ways just to move through the stress. I'd love for you to join me with just a really simple three-point meditation. And this is a meditation for focus. So when your mind is going left and right and there's lots of things going on and you don't know what to do next or you just need a pause, I find this one really helpful. And I'm finding myself doing it on a daily basis, um, even during meetings like this. And you probably haven't noticed. <laughs> so invite you to either lower your gaze or close your eyes, whatever is comfortable for you. And the three-point meditation, let's start with one and two. Very simple. The one is your inhale. Let's do that together. One. And two is your exhale. Let's do that again. One, two, one more, two. Now three is at the bottom of our exhale. We're going to just notice somewhere in our body. It can be our hands, our feet, our gut, our nose, um, our bum on our chairs. Just send your awareness to a place in your body on the three when you hold. So let's do that once together. One, inhale. Two, exhale. Three, hold. Notice a part of your body. Let's do that two more times in your own time. One, two, three. We've done one meditation and that was the three point meditation for focus when your brain is a little bit all over the place. The next one that we'll do is um, four, four, six. And some people do four, seven, eight, but I, I like four, four, six is a good um, breathing exercise for anxiety and just to have a pause. So if everyone's okay to that, uh, for that, let's do that one together. So again, you're welcome to either close your eyes or lower your gaze and just notice your bum or your legs on the chair or the bed. Just notice your body. And we're going to breathe in for four, hold for four and exhale for six. So let's do one together. So in for four. Hold for four. And exhale for six. Now 
Now, everyone do that in their own time. Three more breaths, four, four, six. So that's another example of a breathing exercise that you can do whenever you need a pause um, just to recalibrate or because you're feeling anxious. Now, the next thing that we're going to do, um, I mentioned movement is one of the key ways to move through our body's stress cycle. And so what I'm going to do I'm just going to set that up for me so just to be a bit daring this is something that I was definitely going to do in the physical uh well in the in-person workshop and I think come on let's do it together anyway online even if we look a little bit weird or I will certainly look a little bit weird let's do a body shake exercise and um, this is something that I do um, often before a workshop or before an important coaching session just to uh, get into my body and to just release any negative energy and um, just, just feel grounded in myself. Um, it's also just a little bit of fun. And that's something that I think we can all very easily forget sometimes. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is um, this is a body shaking exercise. Um, maybe some of you have tried something like this before, similar to dance. Okay, so I'm going to stand up. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to shake one leg. So just, I'm going to shake it. And you can do this sitting. Give it a shake. One leg. Now feel your knees involved. Take a knee. Take a knee. Whatever feels good. Don't worry about how it looks. Get your hips involved. If you can. involved if you want. Now this is my favorite part. Get your shoulders going. Up and down. And I'll just let you groove for a moment. Just shake whatever you want. Shake your hands, shake your feet. Have a little dance party. to play it but god bless you i can see quite a few of you dancing with me thank you so those are some ways that you can self-soothe and um and address the feeling of stress or anxiety in the moment three-point meditation is great the four four six and just giving giving your body a chance to shake um, in any way that feels good for you and to have fun with that as well so I hope I hope this has been helpful and has added maybe to your practical toolkit. Mm -hmm.